Hey everybody, Jay Niblick, Brian Arzani here. I'm Jay Niblick, founder of Intermetrics, author of The Profitable Consultant. We'll be talking about that a lot because it's the centerpiece of what we do here at Intermetrics to help independent business consultants establish profitable practices. That's why we're here. Brian, president, Intermetrics North America. Say hey. Hey man, I am so fired up. I'm rejuvenated, had a nice little break. Um, batteries are more than charged, if that's even possible. So I am super fired up. If I'm a little loud today, I'm gonna have to apologize in advance. So I'm jacked. We got 20 minutes to give you guys some content because as Brian said, who created this idea, if you got an hour to, to sit around theorizing about how to be more profitable, I can tell you already why you're not profitable enough. Yeah, so we get 20 minutes and then we're gonna shut up. You guys gotta go sell some shit. Yeah, so today's topic and go back and review the previous ones because this one, Brian actually kind of more a lot of them together it covers like an umbrella a lot of why the DTS model we talked about in session eight the diagnostic sales process the education based marketing today's topic is scarcity versus abundance mentalities and so for those of you that aren't terribly familiar with it Brian you know you actually talked about this recently in another group so give us the stage on scarcity versus abundance mentality Dude, here's the deal. You know, what's crazy is I've been through my own personal journey of what my own genius is. Um, this is 100% in line with, with just who I am. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some examples of, of how it works in front of an audience, how, you know, you can literally take a group of, you know, 200 potential clients. And I've done this. I'm not going to speak from, I'm not going to speak from theory of like, it might work. I've done it. And you know how I did it? I made it up in the moment. It wasn't something that I just sat back and, but it was, it was a day where, you know, we had some things kind of go wrong. And so it just came to me, but it's, it's, it's congruent with who I am. But before I go through this, my, my examples. Well, Jay, what is it real quick? I mean, just, I, I would assume everybody listening probably knows and, and if they've had a class in marketing or anything like that or advertising or sales, give us like a, a brief description, scarcity versus abundance mentality. Scarcity from a, an independent consultant is I'm going to give you just enough to where I've in, enticed you to where I create the most powerful emotion a human can experience, which is curiosity to get them to come to me. Scarcity is I'm only going to give you so much because I need you to become dependent upon me because I am, I need you to become dependent upon the, I'm the source of all things that are valuable, profitable, that are going to help you to become successful. That's that scarcity side where the moment I give you the magic tricks and I kind of pull back that curtain and show you what's going on, you no longer have dependency and need upon me because the only consumable thing an independent consultant has is time and knowledge and experience. And this abundance mentality, man, this is a whole different game where we're going to start to kind of pull that curtain back and give them all of that magic sauce. Teach them. I mean, this is going to age us for a second. But when David Copperfield, right, made the statue ever disappear or 747 disappear, we're like, oh my gosh. And then that one dude came out and said, I'm going to tell you the secrets of all the magicians. And everybody's like, oh, that's the horrible thing. Dude, that's kind of what we do at the end of the day. It's the abundance mentality. And the yeah. ratings on that guy's shows were off the charts. From a traditional business school model, you're looking at scarcity and an abundance makes sense at different times. You hear the old things in sales. You know, you want to own the blood bank in a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. Yet, really cool example. Um, and they're right. When it comes to scarcity, it's good to be rare. You know, the diamond that nobody else has ever seen. The oil is controlled to make scarce the supply because, you know, it drives prices up. You being the only expert on, you know, industrial engineering in the, the 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 glass window factory of north america you know there's only two of you in the entire world right. that scarcity is great it drives value and there's all kinds of benefits to scarcity but what we're talking about and we do in all of our training is carrying that scarcity mentality over incorrectly you know on the marketing website where it says I can't do this all day. You know, there's a ticker going and hurry up scarcity. There's only five classes left. You go to book your flights. You know, there's only three seats left. That's scarcity. Well, Jay, um, do, do this, it, Jake. It, where it comes from to me is, well, sh shut up, but it's scare city. You know, Ooh, it I scares like you into going, well, shit, I better hurry up because I'm going to miss the boat. You know, and so it, I don't like it from a consulting standpoint because we're not selling anything other than ourselves and the authority of the expert. So Brian, back to you, give some examples, but then we're going yeah. to touch on how that drives, why we talk about the education-based marketing we do, which has to be abundance mentality, not scarcity. doesn't work. 1,600 consultants across 52 countries, trust us, we know what works. 
We'll talk about it in the diagnostic sales process, education-based marketing, pricing, you name it. So go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Sorry. You know, Jay, I'm going to give a couple of examples, but let's, let's do this, man. I mean, you're the founder of Intermetrics. I mean, you've got some, some special um, in deep ideals and values inside of you, which form the foundation of how we operate. How did, how did this exhibit itself in you in terms of this abundancy versus scarcity? Because when you went to market, there's already testing products out there. Where did, how, does it, how does this abundance exhibit itself within you as the founder and then also ultimately Intermetrics? When the very first example in my world was how I decided to be the very first company that took an unlimited pricing model. So psychometric tools, personality assessment, behavioral profiles, those are the intellectual property of this company, along with an education on how to use them to become profitable. You know, the training that you can provide and that we provide. Um, I was in Toronto. I was with one of our CICs many years ago. We had the same model. So short backstory, personality assessments in the 70s and 80s were printed. They were published we still refer to ourselves as publisher of disk index, publisher of the advanced insights, but they literally published them. They would print them, you order 25, they were paper and pencil only, no computer, not even a floppy. And so that <laughs> price model stuck to today where the vast majority of companies out there still charge per report. And so if you buy a hundred of them, you pay for a hundred. Um, and I was doing that. I was following everybody else's model. I just got sucked in with the rest of the crowd and conformed. Coming back from Toronto, I'm standing there next to the guy on stage. I'm watching. He's performing. He's doing 75, 80 people into a room, marketing event, educational webinar, lecture. You know, but he's trying. It's for marketing. He's trying to get clients. And out of 75 or 80 people that he spent a lot of money to put lunch in the back of the room, rented this little like uh, auditorium style hall off a of university. He says, and five lucky winners who put their cards in the hat will get a free advanced insights from Intermetrics in an hour of my time to go over the results. And at the end of the thing, I said, question, it was awesome. It was great. You know, I'm, why the hell did you have all that effort and time going to get 80 people into a room and only give five of them the juiciest call to action that you know is likely to end in a sale? And the guy said, I spent so much money doing this that I can't risk $75 or $50 per person times 80 people in the hope that they're all gonna convert. And on the flight home, I was sitting there going, my scarcity mentality just cost this guy 75 leads. Now they were there, they listened to him perhaps, but we know that when you offer that and they take the assessment and they wanna go over the results, you get a free hour or two to talk with these people and develop a relationship. So that's how, when I started to realize that, this is before the education-based marketing we started doing. And that was the very first piece where I said, Let's just give it to them like software, you know, an unlimited flat rate, use all the profiles you want, because if it's going to make your business better, if it's going to make you more profitable, it's going to develop a longer lasting relationship instead of somebody hanging out for 16, 18 months and then going away because they couldn't afford to buy some until they got their client. People stay with us 97% retention rate right. all year, every year, year after year, because we've created a valuable partnership with them. And that's scarcity if I'd said, I can't do this all day, you know, we wouldn't have that relationship. Yeah. So now since we're, we're clicking, how much time do we got, Jay? About what, 12 minutes still? Yeah, I talk too much. Uh, that's okay. Yep, go. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to give you a couple of things. The do it, teach it, support it. The only way that I figured out how to create enough stickiness and enough relevance and value was not to be the expert because here's what happens. Most of us, we talk about this in the profitable consultant, you know, you go out, you get the project, get the project, get the, do the project, do the project. Then all of a sudden you're getting all this money. You're, you're buying cool stuff and then you got to go find a new client. So there's this ebb and flow. So what we worked on and what we tried to figure out was how do we create this, this, you know, we can still have the ebb and flow piece, but how do we slowly over time get this hockey stick to go up, which is I got to figure out how to find rather than find five or six clients that may invest you know, a couple hundred thousand a year, how do I find a thousand clients that might invest several hundred dollars a month with me? And then do that through the concepts of this, this do it, teach it, support it. And so rather than keeping that bag of tricks and all those little magical things, you know, close to the vest, what you got to do is you, here, I look at this in terms of the cycle. We, we find a client and we go in and what we do is we take that C-level person. When I first learned about profiles, they said, don't ever give the assessment to the president. 
And why? Because the president might be broke. And I'm like thinking, well, crap, let's just go build the president. If the president's broke and she'll admit that she's broke, by golly, we're going to have some fun. So I would go to the top. And then here's what you got to do. You got to think about the instrument from the perspective of they're going to look at it and they're going to have a new lens in which they're going to look at the world through. And what they've got to do through the course of this debrief on the profile of the senior level executive, they've got to look through a lens. And then once they leave, that lens has got to leave and they have to sit there and go, I can't imagine my life existing without having this lens, this three dimensional amount of data about my organization, my people, the gaps and all these other types of things. And so we talk about stickiness. What has to happen is they have to have that experience. And then we've got to sit there and go, but here's the thing. And I'll, I will tell a CEO, a prince, president up front, here's the deal. We will not work with you unless you have somebody in your organization that is willing to become the expert and be mentored by me so that we can teach them how to execute. And here's a couple of keywords. Write these words down right now. At the point of incident, when a situation occurs, we empower that leader, that employee to have the skill sets, the self-awareness and the ability to execute at the point of incident so that they're not gonna come back six weeks later because here's what we tell them. Most coaches will say what? So tell me about the last six weeks of your uh, jobs. So I can tell you how bad you suck. And that's what they do. And they create this dependency, this scarcity that goes, I could never do it as good as you, Jay. Right? That's what they say. Let's do some side-by-sides. Yeah. Scarcity mentality, A. I want you to pay me to fix your problems. Boom. Abundance mentality in situation A. I want you to pay me to teach you how to fix your problems using the tools you'll license for me for several hundred bucks for the rest of your life. Freaking awesome. That's, I'm going to do it. It's transactional. It's the worst thing in the world when you're a business consultant coach is trading time for money. Because like you said in the beginning, you only have so much time and you're going to run out of it or you're going to, you better be charging four times as much as you need. So when you turn whatever age you want to turn when you retire, you got enough left, you know, and you better be saving half of it. So instead, abundance mentality says, I'm not going to pay, take the money to trade my time where I go in and fix it. I'm the plumber, you know, or I'm the electrician. I'm going to come in and show you how to fix it. Now, that would be silly if that was it and I gave you everything you needed. Our key to this model is teach them how to lease your product. Teach them how to rent your materials, whatever that is, you know, be the electrical company, the, the power company, the whatever, they're going to pay you. So you go in and like Brian's saying, teach them someone in their organization, maybe multiple. Brian just did this for 20 some odd people down in Nashville. They got 60 more. They're thinking about bringing you back for Brian. Yeah. Um, Cause they want a whole lot of people in the management team, every regional di district manager understanding how to use this. So they all, can be consuming the products that they're now dependent on. That's the key. Isn't, isn't the training crazy? you're giving depends on the personality assessments that they use for training, coaching, hiring, whatever. And, and, and what they said was, here's, here's what happened. Their feedback was this. Nobody has ever taught us as in-depth and complete. Never have we been more capable of going out and being able to make a difference in our own world. Because in the past, the trainers who train it operate from the scarcity mentality. And they go, I'm going to teach you the theoretical. And I'm going to tell you how freaking awesome I am. So when I leave, you're going to go, I could never be as, if you hear those words, I could never be as good as you. You are operating from the scarcity mentality. That's a tough message, isn't it, Jay? For us to tell these folks listening today. If that's right? your objective, if you want them to be so dependent on you that they can't do anything without you. Yes. Think about the marketing we teach about, right? So DTS model was video session number eight. You can look back in the archives, one of the directions on this website, yep. depending on which one you're on. Uh, Education-based marketing, scarcity mentality. I'm going to talk to you about the problem with making effective leaders and hiring effective leaders. And here's why that's not likely to work. Somewhere within 5, 10, 15 minutes, you switch to, now, if you want to understand how to actually effectively hire great leaders, sign up for my webinar where I'll tell you all about it. That scarcity. Yeah. Scenario B. Abundance. Tell them what the hell they need to know about how to hire effective leaders. And you go, wait, well, you just said, if you give it away, they won't need you. One thing we know that you may not have learned yet, but trust me, we have you know, combined 50 some odd years between me, you and Jennifer and 75 with Alan involved. The leadership team here has seen it too many times. The customer that you want is, it's nice to filter this out in the beginning and it's an A-B scenario, it's binary. There's a customer that's gonna take whatever they can get from you and they think they can do it all on their own and they don't need to pay you. There's a customer that says, 
you can tell me what to do, but I want to pay you to show me how to do it. That's the customer you want. So in that education-based marketing, if somebody says, hey, right, they told me what they need to do. Like they gave me everything to go out and do tomorrow morning. I can go try it myself. Good. Don't waste your time with them. It's a good thing they got filtered out. But the ones who hear that go, wow, he told me everything. You want to see an example of abundance marketing? Go to Marshall Goldsmith's website, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. Go to McKinsey and Company, one of the top five consulting firms in the world. Everything they do, they put out on their website. Every article, every website, every education, I mean, every lecture, it's all there. They don't hide it because they know the companies that spend millions with them go, okay, uh, there's plenty of places on the internet I can find out what to do. I need you. Wharton, University of Penn, puts all their content up on there. Yeah. Top five business schools in the country. Harvard, you can go read all of this stuff. The good consultants understand this. They give it out. So that's scarcity versus abundance in marketing. So here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this, because this, this is what a lot of you guys here are listening to this call today. You ladies, men, gentlemen, whatever you call it. But here's what you want to know. So here's what's happened. I've done some education-based marketing events. And I got to say, one event we went to, because we always had all of our brochures and all these other things. And when you go to these big speaking events, right, they typically will give you 10 minutes of content and 80 minutes of buy my CD or DVD or sign up for this. And I got so upset when I would go to those events because I, I went there to get real stuff and I got sold, right? And so, but I became that guy. I would go and I'd have all my stuff on the back of the room, da, 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 da. One time I went out and you know what? None of this stuff showed up. So I told you in the beginning of this little, you know, our, our 20 minute uh, segment here that I was going to give you the, the, the key of what's worked the best. This is hands down, flat out, the number one technique of what has worked the best doing education-based marketing live, in person, right there. What happens is this. We don't let them know how to get a hold of us. We don't create anything in the back of the room what they're expecting. So they show up, they get their coffee, their donut, blah, 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 and they start looking around. Where's the books? And where's the, where's the handout? Where's the flyers? And I get up in the front, and I did this. This is what I did that day. I said, hey, how many of you today came here not knowing what you came here for? And they're like, no, we know we came here. We're gonna react that day we we're going to talk about recruiting. We're talking about how to find, hire, retain top performing individuals and organizations. I said, okay, cool. How many of you today, just show of hands, how many of you are expecting at some point during the course of our conversation today to get a commercial on how to do business with us? Raise your hands. And like half of them raise their hands. I'm like, I mean, seriously, 50% of you are so naive to think that we're not going to ask you for your business through some sort of a commercial or, or a brochure. And, I, and then boom, all their hands up. I said, okay, cool. Here's the deal. I promise you that over the course of our time today, 90% of what I give you will be immediately applicable and you'll be able to use it today to find, hire, retain, and get better people. Will you grant me 10% of this time today that I might do a commercial to kind of show you what it might look like if you guys agree that we might be someone that you might do business with? Show of hands, how many would you like a 90-10? They all raised their hand and said, rock and roll. And then you know what we did? We did the rest of the program and at the end of the program, we never told them how to contact us. We never told them how to do business with us. We didn't even put our phone number up on the board. And you know what was crazy? These people came up, they formed a line at the end and they said, how do we get in touch with you? That was amazing. That was more than we thought we were going to get. Boom. And here's what happened. Every time we went into those clients' offices, you know what we did? We did more than what was expected. Yeah. And, and, and but you that, gave you gave it. purely with an abundance mentality. And this isn't altruism. I'm not talking about going out and uh, it's purely, donating it's all your purely time and going broke. This is the most effective way to generate new leads. This is the yep. most effective way to generate clients. Scenario C, similar to what he was just talking about. I've got a profile. I'm talking to a prospect, suspect, maybe even a prospect. I've narrowed it down, qualified them at least a little bit. And I want to talk to them about taking a, an assessment. Scarcity mentality causes the consultant to go, well, I'm going to have to charge you for it. You know, I mean, I got to pay something for it. You got to pay something for it too. You know, and it's before you've even made the real sale because you don't sell profiles. You're out there trying to get a $50,000 year long engagement. You try to put in front of that a sale in front of your sale. It's kind of like, I want you to go to lunch with me so I can talk about it, but you need to pay for lunch. What the hell? You know, that's super scarcity mentality. But I don't think there's any difference between that and saying, I want to talk to you first. I'd love to show you how we can help you and give you an example of a personality assessment. You can look at this static sample that's got Ronald Reagan's name on it. If you want one of your own, you're going to have to pay 350 bucks for it. Scarcity. I've been Abundance. there, dude. Oh, I, have... I did it too. Abundant. Oh my gosh, give I've the damn there. thing away. 
I've given 300 plus profiles to a team in a corporation at no charge because I hadn't made the sale yet. You know, it's I now this was going to be a big ticket consulting gig, but I needed to understand why the cultural conflict was happening. No, they didn't so invest eleven thousand five hundred dollars just to do a sales call back then. Yeah. But they didn't get the reports back, but I gave it to them so I could have the data in a spreadsheet and then I went back in. But that abundance gets me time and time again, somebody that says, dude, you give me this report, I wanna go what the results are. Yeah, I'll give you an hour next one Thursday. I'll give you an hour today, what do you got? You know, and when you look at the diagnostic sales process, you'll see, go back and, and watch video number nine, you'll see how that abundance mentality makes sense. Sorry, 20 no, minutes. I think this was a good, this was a good one, man. If, I, if I'm on the other side of the game, I, I, I've got two or three nuggets in this one that I know I can put to work right now. Go sell some shit, everybody. Later. Go sell Bye. some shit.